1865. The place, Concord, Massachusetts, one of the first colonial settlements in the United States. And our story is about four beautiful sisters who lived in this charming town. From Louisa May Alcott's Little Women, Christmas Eve. This is the home of our four heroines. Margaret is the oldest, and she is lovingly called Meg for short. Amy, the youngest, is the sophisticated one in the family. The third sister, Elizabeth, is very bashful and shy. They call her Beth. And this is Josephine, the second oldest. She's a tomboy who dreams of becoming a great novelist. People call her Joe, like a boy, but she doesn't mind it at all. Hey, hiya, Joe. Come on, let's race. Okay, let's go. No! Crash landing. Whoops! Oh, Merry Christmas, Joe! Are you all right? <laughs> yes, thank you. Merry Christmas, Mr. Burns. I'm not good on snow, but I never fall on ice. Yeah, Joe, you're a good skater, but it's your walking that needs improvement. Now go home and try to stay on your feet. <laughs> oh, I bet you can't do this. <laughs> Look! Did you get hurt? Of course not. Isn't it beautiful? We did it while you were out, didn't we, Tangie? It's nice, but a Christmas tree doesn't make much sense without presents. I know, I agree. I can't get used to the idea of being poor. I remember when Christmas Eve was full of wonderful presents and the whole family gathered around the tree. Some kids get wonderful presents. We're the only ones who never get anything. It's unfair. Oh, but Amy, a lot of people are much poorer than we are. And after all, we at least have Mama and Papa and each other. Papa's gone. He won't be back for a while. Ah! Oh! Why 
does everything always happen to us? Joe, remember what Mama always says. Think of Papa and all the men who've been drafted into the Army. They're having an even harder time. Meg's right. We're very lucky. The United States is being torn by a terrible civil war between the northern states, who want slavery abolished, and the southern states, who refuse to give slaves their liberty. It is a terrible time in our nation's history, a time of anguish, a time of suffering. novelist and I'll be rich so I can have all I desire and I can buy all of you presents mm. for you Beth I'll buy you a new piano so you can play for you Meg I'll buy you dozens of dresses and beautiful dolls for Amy oh, oh Joe do you mean it just how soon can you become famous soon you just watch stop that only boys whistle so what? oh why don't you grow up and start acting like a lady, Joe, huh? Hmm. Since when did you become an adult? Now stop it, both of you. Birds who share the same nest shouldn't fight. Huh? Hmm? <laughs> <laughs> Amy, why must you always be telling everyone what to do and how to act? You sound like an old lady. And you, Joe. Stop arguing with Amy. You're both behaving like babies, you understand? Huh. Oh. Oh. oh, if having my hair up means being a lady, then I'll keep my hair long until I'm 80. Oh, I'm so tired of having to act like everyone expects me to. I hate ribbons in my hair, and I hate long dresses. Oh, how I wish I had been born a boy so I could have gone to war with Don't my papa. Don't feel bad, Joe. You're always so sweet, Beth, but you mustn't worry about me. Because someday my dreams will come true. I'll become a famous novelist. I'm sure. Oh. Oh. So, let's get started. Let's rehearse the Christmas play. Beth, play some music to get us into the mood. Amy? I've just written a wonderful new scene for you. Oh, it's so melodramatic. I don't like scary plays. Oh, it's not scary. Wait, you'll see. You're a beautiful princess, and then you cry out, Rodrigo, Rodrigo, please save me, and then you faint. Isn't that simple, Amy? Rodrigo, Rodrigo, please save me, and then I faint. It sounds easy. Is she a real princess, Joe? Yes, she is, Amy, but she doesn't know her true identity, so she serves the evil witch Hagar. Beth will play Hagar. We'll start just after Beth has left, holding a pan full of boiling toads. Now the princess is locked in a very high tower. Just then, Hugo the villain appears. Amy will start shouting, Rodrigo, Rodrigo, please save me. Then Rodrigo, played by Meg, enters. I play a man? Who are you going to play? Who, me? I'm Hugo the villain. I'm the most evil of all men, and I'm here to take the princess away. It's not so hard, so let's do it. Oh, no, that's the most important note. I hate this piano. Don't worry about that, Beth. Just keep playing. I am Hugo the Notorious, and I have come to take the princess away, and I pity the man who tries to stop oh, me. Oh, Rodrigo, Rodrigo, please save me. Good. <laughs> <laughs> All right, little ladies, it's time for tea. Why tea instead of coffee? I'm afraid we're all out of coffee, Amy. It's become very expensive with the war and all. And although I try to make ends meet, I can't stretch the money that your mother gives me any more than I already have. Oh, well, well, it seems like some people have nothing better to do than huh? to peek into other people's houses. Who's that, Hannah? Mr. Lawrence's grandchild. That eccentric old man actually has a grandchild? Joe, what are you doing? Get away from that window. 
She's right, Joe. It's not polite to stare back. Amy, Beth, don't you start also. Get back here. Mr. Lawrence's grandchild is a boy. I want to make friends with him. You. hasn't been shoved. These ah, children are not to learn. You tell him, Fanny. You tell him. And what's wrong with boys? I'm not immodest. You're just old-fashioned. Now, the only problem is, how am I going to become friends with him? He's that scary old man's grandson. So what? He may be very nice. Oh, I know. I know how to meet him. Oh. <coughs> Oh, Auntie Marge, Marge. how are your parents? <laughs> a very, very Merry Christmas to you, Auntie March. A very, very Merry Christmas to you, Auntie March, and to your parrot, too. A very Merry Christmas to you, Auntie March. Merry Christmas, Meg, Amy, Beth. Uh -huh. Merry Christmas, Aunt March. I'm glad you're well. I am not well. Now come here. Ah, come here. Yes. Oh! Oh! Ah. <laughs> Joe, when I asked you to come here, I didn't mean for you to leap over the table. Why must you always make me angry? I'm sorry, Aunt March. Amy, you're looking lovely. Are you still pinching your nose with a clothespin to look aristocratic? Oh, yes, Auntie March. <laughs> All young girls should be as ladylike as you. <laughs> Just don't put on airs. I know, Auntie March. Well, here's a Christmas present for you. <laughs> oh, thank you, Auntie March. Amy, you're lovely, lovely rock! <laughs> Beth, tell me, are you still playing piano? Yes, Auntie March, I am. Beth, you're too quiet. Uh, oh... You're 13, so you shouldn't be so shy. You have to learn to be stronger. I'll try, Aunt March. Good. Now, here's a gift for you. Oh! Thank you, Aunt March. Not at all. Let's see who's next. Oh. Rock, rock, forget Joe, forget Joe. Rock, don't hit me, don't hit me, rock. Meg. Yes, Auntie? Since you're the eldest, the responsibility of helping your mother with the house falls on your shoulders. Yes. Here's your present. Oh, thank you so much, Aunt March. You're always so kind. Rock! Oh! You're a nice one, you're a nice one, rock! Ha, huh, such a stupid parrot. Oh, anyways, I guess I'm the dropout. Rock, yes, yes, you're the dropout, rock! Did you say you dropped something? No, uh, uh, Merry Christmas, Aunt March. You already wished me a Merry Christmas, Joe. Oh, I'm sorry. Ah, uh, I suppose there's no sense in asking a tomboy like you if you're ever going to grow up and change your ways. You're right, Aunt March. Are you still writing those unsaleable novels? Well? Yes, Aunt March. Well, then do your best. Huh? <laughs> Someday, if you keep writing, you may turn out to be a good novelist, but first learn some manners. Yes, Aunt March. And this is for you. What? Oh, great! Ah. Oh, thank you, Aunt March. Oh, there's no hope. You're starting again. Joe, you must come and spend some time with me after Christmas. I've made up my mind. You must be taught some etiquette. Oh. Tough luck, tough luck, Rock. Ah. Uh. Rock, help! Joe! Um. Yes, Aunt March? Now go back inside. I don't want you to catch a cold. Beth, you're not strong. Take care of yourself. Well, I'll be going. Giddy up. Look, she gave me a dollar. Oh, I got a dollar too. A whole dollar. Oh, she gave mommy, a dollar to mommy, each mommy. of us. I'm going shopping right now. We should all go to Mr. Grace's store. Let's all go before Mama gets home.
Merry Christmas and welcome to my store, little ladies. Have you come to buy some presents? Merry Christmas, Mr. Grace. We've all come to shop. Each one of us has a dollar. I'll be glad to help you. I want a new hat with lots of pink feathers. I want new sheet music. And I want a dollar's worth of new ribbons for my hair. All right, girls. I think I have everything you're looking for. Uh, I'll take this book, Mr. Grace. Dark Avenger. But, Joe, you already read that the last time you were here, remember? Why not take another one? Oh, um... Um... Oh, I'll take this one. I don't think I've read this one. You really like those novels, don't you, Joe? Yes. <laughs> if you find that you've already read it, you can return it. Oh, thank you, Mr. Grace. By the way, Joe, I just noticed you still have all that beautiful long blonde hair. Oh, thank you, Mr. Grace. If you ever decide to cut it, old Mulligan the barber would want it. What for? He could make a fine wig with it, sell it, and you could make from $25 to $50. No, I wouldn't dream of selling my hair. Oh, Mr. Grace, you shouldn't put crazy ideas like that into her head. Okay, okay, I'm sorry, forget it. I said an awful thing. Do you think you can ever forgive me, Joe? Oh, that's perfectly all right, Mr. Grace. Really? <sighs> Girls, I thought I'd find you asleep. Welcome home, Mama. Hello, my dear. Uh, Mama, we decorated the tree. Aunt March came by earlier and she gave each of us a present. Really? Oh, how nice. I'm so glad to find you all so happy. Amy, give me another kiss. <laughs> Mama, you must be cold. Come closer to the fire. How are you feeling, Beth? Fine, Mama. Joe, I hope you've behaved like a young lady today. Oh, yes, Mom, I've behaved. Let's see. <laughs> Good. And Meg, what have you been doing? I saw Mrs. Baker today. I'm going to work as the governess to her children. Four dollars a week, Mama. They're all nice children. That's wonderful. It will be a big help to us, Meg. I'll work hard, Mama. Thank you, Meg. Joe, bring me my purse. I have something to show you I think you'll like. Oh, a surprise? A surprise for Joe? It's for you too, Amy. It's for all four of you. Oh! Huh. Please, Mama, read it to us. Hurry. Your father wrote this from a faraway battlefield. My dear wife and children, first of all, let me wish you a very Merry Christmas. During the day, I think of all of you so much even while desperately fighting to save our republic. And at night I pray for you all. I pray that God keeps you well. The war I am fighting is for the sake of freedom, and many men are dying and being wounded. I know it is difficult for you to live without your father, but I hope you will remember what I've said. Be good children and help your mother. Remember this is twice as hard on her. Work together to maintain an honorable and proud household. Girls, take care of your mother. When I return from the war, I'll be that much prouder of my little ladies, and I shall love you all the more. Of that, I am very certain. From your father who loves the five of you more than anyone else in this whole world. All my blessings and love to my dear ones so very far away. Papa. Mrs. Hummel, that poor lady is very ill. She's calling for you, and they've asked that you see her. She must have gotten worse. I must go to her. Good night. I won't be long. Now go to bed. Good, Good night, night, Mama. Mama. Mama, slippers are in. Oh. 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 We have to do something. But we don't have any money. What can we do? I don't know. Oh, Joe. I've got an idea. Look. Oh. I know what Joe's thinking. Let's go to Mr. Grace's store one more time, girls. 
Yeah. Good idea, Meg. Has anyone seen my clothespin? Oh, Amy, you ask the same thing every night. Oh, Joe, be quiet. I wasn't talking to you. Amy, didn't you hide the clothespin under your bed? I looked for it, but I can't find it. Oh, hooray! It's Mama! Run! Merry Christmas, Mother. This small present is for you, the best mother a person could want. Oh, my dears. so lucky that you've given me such wonderful daughters. Thank you so very much.